Hi tech lovers and welcome to another episode of the Tech Hub. In this video I look at the CalDigit Thunderfort Pro Dock, otherwise known as the TS4, and show you how I use this powerhouse of a dock. Is it still the dock to buy in 2024? Let's find out. Let's start the episode. So let's start with why I bought it. So having three devices, the Mac Studio, my MacBook Pro and my iPad Pro, which I use regularly, I wanted to be able to plug in my studio display, external hard drives and other devices into all of them. And I was looking for not only the best device to do this, but with an element of ease. I also wanted something that wouldn't look out of place and would visually match this Apple silver thing that I've got going here. I also wanted a dock where the main device plugs in at the back so there wouldn't be a cable con constantly at the front which just really looks untidy to me and my OCD would pop. As always I did my research and time and time again it led me to the CalDigit Thunderbolt 4 Pro Dock, the TS4. The only drawback I could see was the colour didn't match my setup as it was more of a grey. But then I found that Apple do an exclusive only an Apple Silver variant. Apart from the colour and a different model number and firmware, I can't see any differences with this dock rather than if you bought it directly from CalDigit. And surprisingly, another advantage of buying it direct from Apple was it was cheaper. Who would afford it? It was cheaper with Apple. Uh, direct from CalDigit, it's £399, and the only Apple version, direct from Apple, is £299.95. So, I am going to talk about some of the specification. This isn't a full review, there's plenty of review videos out there to check that out with. So, this has 18 ports of connectivity, and you can use it to charge your devices with up to 98 watts of power. So the ports are, there's three Thunderbolt 4 ports, which are 40 gigabytes per second on the back. One of which is where you plug in your PC or your tablet, so your main device you're using it from. It supports a single display up to 8K or up to dual 6K 60Hz displays using a USB-C and the display port. The display port, which is 1.4, is on the back, and I use an active display port to HDMI adapter to use over HDMI with my external monitor. It has five USB A 10 gigabytes per second ports, four on the back, and one of them is on the front. There is three USB C, so 10 gigabytes per second ports, two on the front, and one on the back. It also has one SD and one micro SD card reader on the front and a 2.5 gigabyte Ethernet port on the back. As for audio, there is a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack in the front and one in the back, and that also has an audio in jack. But if you are using the front one, the rear ones won't work, so the front one does take precedence. As for what comes in the box, it comes with a power adapter, which is 230 watts, which is a beast of a power brick, uh, but it uses this power fully. Also in the box, you get a Thunderbolt 4 cable with it, which is a little short in my opinion, so I just used that from the studio display to the dock, because there wasn't really much distance to go there. Uh, and then I use a longer cable that I had, um, for my main device from the, the dock itself. Lastly, it also comes with um, some rubber strips which you plug into the ridges, as you can see on the top here. The bottom has those ridges as well. So these rubber feet are designed so you can lie it flat rather than upright, which is what I've done here. So let's talk about everything that I've got plugged into it. So obviously my Apple Studio display is plugged into one of the Thunderbolt 4 ports on the back. And my HP monitor, the M22F external display, is connected via a HDMI using an active display port to HDMI adapter, which connects to the display port on the back. The next device I have connected is my SanDisk Professional G Drive. It's four terabytes uh, and it has those USB speeds uh, for up to 10 megabytes uh, per second, which is why I purchase it to utilize the fast speed for my Final Cut Pro library. I also use this for external storage. Um, so I've created some partitions and I use it for my Mac time machines as well. 
Interestingly though, before I had the TS4 dock, I was only getting five gigabytes per second speeds, or at least when I looked at the that device, it said it was limited to five gigabytes per second. Uh, but since plugging it into the Thunderbolt 4 port on here, um, it is working. So with the Thunderbolt 4 on my Mac st Studio, I wasn't getting those speeds, but now I am. I also have my Elgato 4K capture device plugged in, but this is for more where I have the device rather than what in it to um, connect to all of my devices. So it was closer to the dock than my Mac Studio, so I just plug it into the dock. I have a USB-C to lightning cable plugged in for when I need to plug in any Apple device with a lightning port um, to my Mac. So such as when I'm restoring devices that I am reselling. I also use this cable so I can pair my Apple Magic Keyboard, mouse and trackpad to the device that I've got the TS4 plugged into. Uh, more on this later. The last thing I have plugged in is a USB-C to USB-C cable for any other USB-C device that I need to use. I don't use any of the rear USB-A ports, so I have three USB-A to USB-C adapters plugged into them, which has just converted them to USB-C. So I've got a choice for either extra USB-C or USB-A so Let's talk about how, how I use it with my Mac Studio. So primarily, my that is my default setup. It lives plugged in uh, on my desk setup into my Mac Studio. And I'm super happy with how it looks and works with my main setup. I have my four terabyte G drive partitioned to four sections. So one for my Final Cut Pro library, one for my tech channel, files and two for my time machine backups of my Mac Studio and my MacBook Pro. The only port I don't use with my Mac Studio is the 2.5 gigabyte Ethernet port as the Mac Studio has a 10 gigabyte Ethernet port which is better and faster. So I just disable the 2.51 under the network settings uh, in the Mac. Um, I would say that it's plugged into my Mac Studio for 70% of the time uh, so this is where it lives. Now let's talk about how I use it with my MacBook Pro. So for about 25% of the time I use the TS4 with my M3 MacBook Pro 14 inch, which I use for work and of course lap time. Although I have started using this more for Final Cut Pro due to the power of the M3 and even though my M3 is the base model with only 8 gigs of RAM, it matches my M1 Max 32 gigabyte Mac Studio in performance if not slightly better. So to switch it from my Mac Studio to my MacBook Pro, I unplug the Thunderbolt 4 cable plugged into the studio and plug it directly into the MacBook Pro, which I keep in clamshell mode under my studio display. So it's tucked away nicely. Make a note here that if you are going to use it like I do, you need to eject any external hard drives that you have plugged in to the TS4 so that they eject correctly from the device you're removing them from. On the CalDigit website, they do software for this called Docking Station Utility, which lets you eject the connected devices from the menu bar. However, I could not get their software to work, but I'm not sure if that's because I'm running the beta of macOS Sequoia. The software installs fine, but it does not recognize the TS4 dock. The website does state it hasn't been updated since December 2022 though, so that might be the reason. I did contact CalDigit support about this, but I haven't received a reply. I did find a workaround though. You can set up a shortcut in the Mac shortcut app to eject external hard drives. And then I just have this showing in the shortcuts menu bar. So essentially it does the same thing that the CalDigit software if it did work. Of course, if the MacBook Pro is open, you can only have one external display. And annoyingly, this tends to default to the HP monitor. So I just unplug the HDMI cable from that if I want it running in this mode and it switches to the studio display. I haven't found a setting that switches it for me without unplugging the HP monitor and powering off the monitor is not enough, which is a shame because I have a smart plug connected to it so I find it annoying. I have to unplug the HDMI from the monitor to make the switch to the studio display. I do use the 2.5 gigabyte ethernet port with my MacBook Pro, which is great to make full use of my gigabyte internet connection. At this point, I don't 
I haven't really discussed using the front port as I tend to use that. I, I don't tend to use them that often on the TS4, apart from charging some devices, but it's certainly handy having those ports in the front. Now and again, I use the micro SD slot if I'm using footage from my GoPro Hero 10. And it's nice to have an SD card reader slot for my DSLR. But I tend to only use the DSLR on holiday and I usually use the SD card slot with my iPad. Now, the only other thing I, ha I use at the front uh, more frequently is a portable USB SSD drive that I use when I'm on the move. But I also have a partition for a backup backup time machine. So I plug this in the front to have a secondary backup of both of my Macs, which I back up about once a week, just in case my external hard drive would ever fail for my main time machine backups. It's better to be safe than sorry. So the third device that I use this for, of course, is my, uh, my M4 iPad Pro 13 inch. Um, and I haven't used it a lot, but I do now and again want to use the studio display with it, especially if I'm having a gaming session. So with the longer Thunderbolt 4 cable I'm using again, I just eject any external hard drives and the cable reaches nicely to where I keep my iPad Pro on its magnetic desk stand. Again, sometimes it de defaults to display in the external display on the HP monitor, so again I have to unplug it. I don't tend to use the external hard drives with my iPad Pro, um, but it's good to know that they're there if I need them. So I mainly use it in this setup just to use the Apple Studio display. But of course, it does also take advantage of that 2.5 Ethernet cable as well, so I get super internet speeds on my iPad. So one of the reasons I have a USB to lightning cable plugged in is so that when I switch to a different device, instead of, instead of pairing my Apple Magic Keyboard, Magic Mouse and Magic Trackpad through the Bluetooth settings, all I need to do is plug in the lightning cable um, to each of those devices and it's instantly paired with the device that I want to use. So let's summarize about the TS4. Um, so I'm super happy with the TS12 dock and the only thing that I would change is it would be great if it came with some sort of system where I could switch it to a different device without having so much effort of unplugging from one and into another. I've looked into Thunderbolt 4 switches to do this, but they are as expensive as this dock on its own. So I plan just to get maybe an extension cable to give me even more length with the Thunderbolt 4 cable to make it a little bit easier. Maybe if CalDigit could supply it with some form of switch to do this, that would be nice. So I can easily say that the TS4, in my opinion, is still the dock to buy in 2024. And I am thrilled with my choice and it is a powerhouse of a device. And it looks sleek as well. Of course, with Apple doing the exclusive one only at Apple, it's got their seal of approval for the, the boxing, the way it looks and how it interacts with their Hello, thank you for watching another episode of the Tech Hub. Do you have a TS4? Were you watching this to decide if you're going to buy one? Are you going to buy one? Let me know in the comments. Please follow me on Instagram and threads at Tech Hub Welch UK. Please like this video and subscribe to me for more tech videos. And I'll see you on the next one.